nine years to write this book. What was in the first draft that you junked it? <laughs> That's a really good question. Um, what was in the first draft was, I feel, the shadow of victimhood. I knew in my gut that it was not the right book when I submitted it, so I withdrew it and actually sat on it for years, mm. years. And I couldn't even explain to myself, never mind the people around me, why I was so blocked. You know, I have a very small little nuclear family, aside from trips back to Kolkata, where we had this large, unruly joint family. I didn't really observe anyone else around me journaling the way that I did, but it was like a compulsion. And it was, and I still prefer writing in books. Although now I use my, I use my phone, I use my notes and phone, but it's not exactly the same. The biggest sort of secret of my life is that my entire career has been an excuse to relocate back to India, which is where I found everyday life the most inspiring and where I drew most of my, I guess, maybe artistic sustenance. So my entire career has been an excuse. Leading up to this point, that is happens the biggest. Everything happens for a reason. I knew it would happen one day. Yeah. It's only, as I said, taken me 30 years to get here now. And that's why I, also the title, Close to the Bone. Probably it's a play on obviously the bone cancer that I was diagnosed with, but uh, maybe a play on shedding everything and getting back to what is so completely stripped bare and fundamental that you can't hide anymore. You can't hide from yourself. And on that note, let's eat. <laughs> because why? Oh my God. So what we have for you here is it's a fistica which has actually been marinated with uh, turmeric pickle. Uh -huh. So when turmeric is fresh and seasoned, that's when we pickle it. So it stays mm. the whole six months and then that's how we then convert it into a pickle. Achha. And that's then it's used as a marination. What we have on the base is, is beetroot. What's in the pipette is primarily, uh, you know, lemon mm. juice with a little bit of, uh, you know, butter to uh, moisten your... Because it just, it just tastes good. good. It just tastes good. <laughs> And turmeric is also very anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, anti of course. It is something that is uh, used from uh, way before in Ayurveda as well. Exactly. So we try to uh, get all that into our food as well. Enjoy our meal. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank so you so much, much Chef. <sighs> it's so... Yeah, I can't... I, I wish you could smell this. It's so good. And of course, I'm a Bengali, so I... First, first preference is fish, always. It was like Chef asked me, so, so, so what do you... First, he was, he was a little worried that I was vegetarian. He was actually very worried about it. I said, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, bring it on. And then he was very happy. He said, okay, cello fish. Can I? Yes, please. Okay. Please. Uh, I didn't know how to ask for help. That's another part of my journey, to be honest. And that was another breakthrough. That was another thing that cancer helped me with. It wasn't until I was diagnosed with cancer that I finally understood how to ask for help. I was so self-contained. I can manage, I can do everything on my own. I'm independent, I'm strong, to a fault, you know? And uh, so, as I said, for instance, if I had perhaps been a little bit more open, if I had been known how to ask for help, someone I'm sure would have intervened. Because I had very good friends. I still have it. I still have the same friends and they're incredible people. But um, no, I didn't know how to ask for help. And if anything, I would uh, shrink away from help. And it wasn't until cancer that I, I finally made that breakthrough. You know, I'm 47 today. And, you know, I don't expect my body ever to resemble the same silhouette that it did, obviously, when I was 16. But, you know, I'll, I'll still feel a little bit self-conscious because that's the nature of the business. You are scrutinized from every single angle. And I think it's actually gotten worse. It's gotten a lot worse with the red carpet culture, with social media, Paparazzi. with, um, you know, it's complete mm. and utter objectification, even if it's not taking a sexist tone. Uh, most of the in incredibly beautiful women I've known are also incredibly insecure. And I fall into that category as well. Not today. I would actually say not today. I still suffer from some insecurity, of course. But um, I, you know, it, when I look at myself at the height of my fame and desirability, I, 
felt that I was just, I felt I had no value. It was incredibly ugly. Um, I, it was hard for me to look in the mirror and I was trying to seek validation from other people. And I always felt it was wrong. I always had a strange kind of double life going on because I really valued the life of the spirit and the intellect more than anything else and kept also, as I say, oh, I'm just taking this lightly, but you can't help it. You know, the environment that you're in starts to influence the way that you think. The people that surround you starts to influence the way that you think. So it wasn't until, you know, and I used to act out. I used to use also my body as expression. So hence the anorexia, the bulimia, and also wearing really tatty clothes, feeling that nobody's going to take me seriously unless I look really ragged. So it's interesting. I think I've written in, in, in Close to the Bone that, you know, there is that kind of environment or Bombay in those days where beauty was enough of a calling card, you know. But I wanted more. And I knew I was capable of much more. And I knew that beauty wasn't my only calling card. Look, we have to be smart in the world. If it gets you through the door, fantastic. If, you know, as I said, I will use this incredible platform that I have been given in India, and I'm deeply grateful for, to leverage it to be able to talk about my words and my sentences in my book, why shouldn't I do that, right? Absolutely. My career, started on the edge of a blade because on one side was everything that people aspire for, you know, fame and money and um, respect and validation. And on the other side was personal tragedy. I don't think I ever really absorbed it into my psyche. It doesn't look like me. <laughs> that's the only comment I would make. Yeah, it's a nice cover, but it doesn't look like me. So maybe that's why I can't even connect with that initial Glad Rags cover. I'm, I'm probably still seen as very foolish or very odd for turning down a lot of what, uh, a lot of opportunities that you know anyone would take or aspire to. Uh, but that's okay. That's not who I am. At least I can really own my experiences. No, yeah, I don't regret it because that's it's just not a world that I'm really comfortable in, except you know from the periphery. Unfortunately, things have changed a lot, you know, so now at 47, I'm, I've been back in India in the last, you know, more or less three, four years, and I'm getting really interesting opportunities. When I was diagnosed, there was just something deep inside me that said, this is not your time. So I knew it was not going to be a full stop. I knew it was not going to be easy, but I also knew that cancer was not going to be the end of me, not this cancer, not this round. So perhaps that gave me a kind of a resilience. I'm sure that, you know, in a sense, the idea of certain practices, spiritual practices, what, what, whatever form it takes in your life, the idea behind it is that it does prepare you for moments like that, but you don't realize it. You know, it should perhaps is quite subtle. And then suddenly when you're really in hot water, when you're in a crisis, when you're in a whether it's a health crisis or a, you know, a, a mental crisis or whatever it is, that's when something kicks in. What I know for sure at 47 is very little, very little. I know, <clears throat> what I know is that life is constantly changing, that the essential reality around us is impermanent but there are lasting things like love. There is spirit and there is these incredible connections. That's what I trust. And I trust my gut and I trust my heart. And my mind sometimes has a little role to play, but not that much.